The subwoofer is the heart of any good immersive systems and usually when you hear an exciting and immersive sound, the first things that you focus on is the bass, right? And make bass may be easy but also really difficult if the subwoofer is not in the right spot, but that is another story. But what does it make an expensive subwoofer like this one better than a affordable subwoofer? And first of all, can we hear the difference? Today's review is not only about the D12S, but I'm going to share with you something really interesting that I discovered during my test. So let's do it. Perlisten is not new on Med Audio YouTube channels and I did a first impressions video that I will let in descriptions regarding the bookshelf S4. Well, I don't know if we can call it bookshelf because they are pretty huge as speakers. And I had the chance to interview also the Perlisten team that did a beautiful setup 11.7.67 subwoofer that was insane in collaborations with Dirac and Storm Audio. The D12S is the smallest subwoofer of Perlisten, that is still a compact size subwoofer, but not small at all if compared, for example, with the SVS2000 Pro. And basically Perlisten subwoofer are split in two categories, where we can find acoustic suspensions like the D12S that we are going to review today and the bigger or taller push-pull design. So two driver instead one. By the way, they are all sealed cabinet. We don't have pass reflex designs. The D12S is coming with an impressive 1.5 kilowatt amplifier, 32 bit processors and a TI DSP, 300 millimeter or 12 inch beautiful carbon fiber driver. Then we have a 2.4 inch touchscreen displays and a beautiful smart app that we are going to check later. On the back we can find two balance and two unbalanced input and output that are basically just a pass through of the input signal. It's coming with an insane THX certifications. I will let the link in descriptions for those who don't know what is. And the weight is something like 40 kilograms, 90 pounds. Yes, it's f heavy. It's more than two times heavier than the SVS 2000 Pro, probably the heaviest subwoofer that I had at home. Please do not install it alone. I repeat it every time and I say it every time. But thanks to a really good packaging, I didn't have absolutely any problem to complete the setup by myself. The beautiful magnet grill, let me take it, is sold like accessories. It's really, really beautiful. It's really well made. Beautiful materials, incredibly solid. And actually I really like it because this finish is giving a look that is really closer to my home theater from Sonos Faber, the Sonetto line. So both are coming in white with a magnet grills in black. It's available in two finishes, set in black and white, but as far as I know, there is also a custom matte black finish. Not sure about it, but I saw it online. The construction quality is insane. From the solid perfect finish to the details like the Perlisten logo on the subwoofer, but also on the magnet grill. The perfect rounded corners, the fiber carbon driver that is slightly recessed and low tuning feeds like in race cars are giving a touch of luxury and truly remarkable design. Feeds that are adjustable, so absolutely no problem to level your subwoofer. It's the most beautiful subwoofer that I ever saw. It just look amazing. For the touch clean display you have the possibility to play with some basic functions like volume level, EQ mode, impact selections, check the subwoofer status and make a small diagnostic with a test tone of 40 Hz. A unique function that I saw only on per listen subwoofer. In addition to the touch screens we have the iOS Android audio subwoofer app. A great app really similar to the SVS1 that we saw on my channels but with more features. Let's take a look about it. After the connections, you will have the possibility to see both subwoofers and generally what I like to do is rename it like left and right. For some reasons, I had to do these operations a couple of times during the first days, but after that, absolutely no problem. From the main page, we can control the master volumes and organize subs in group if we want. Next, by select one subwoofer, we have the possibility to select three types of different equalization mode for small, large and THX rooms, but we'll check it later. Then crossover that I let it disable since it's managed by LFE channels and my home theater. 
then we have the possibility to enable three presets mode for parametric equalizations with each one that will give you 10 parametric equalizations band. That's insane. On SVS we had only three, for example, if you remember. So you can draw your flat line as you wish, if you want. Then we have input control. So RCA XLR, 12 volt triggers, RCA XLR input gains. You can manage the sensitivity. And that's a really beautiful features that I was looking on every subwoofer. Sometimes you play some movies, right? And subwoofer doesn't give you any reactions and after explosions, after a couple of sound, because he was in standbys, you will have the bass and you say, oh no, I have to watch again. But here we go, you can turn on on the Perlis d 12 s the sensitivity on high and the lower level of signals will turn on the subwoofer. That's a next level features coming from the Perlis d 12 s I had to spend five grand for this. And in the end we have LCD black lights and firmware upgrade. So name us up that is coming with so many features. That's really beautiful, well done. I test both smart apps on iOS and Android and I noticed that on my Android is taking 20 seconds and 10 seconds on the iOS to open it. So iOS is okay, Android is a little bit slower. But it could be also something coming from my smartphone, right? the Samsung, I don't remember the name, so take it in consideration, but absolutely any problem with the smart app that is bug free and working perfectly. <music> All my tests well done with one subwoofer, but usually my configurations is a 5.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup. So I tested both one subwoofer, one D12S and also two D12S. But the review and the sound quality that I'm going to tell you about was done, was performed with only one subwoofer. My room is not huge, something like 24 square meters and one subs was more than enough. Everything is driven by the Maren Cinema 40 that is powering four height Dolby Atmos speakers and all the rest is powered by the musical fidelity to 50.5 multi-channel amplifier also reviewable in description. I did a video about this setup, I added the Motiva XPA, I'm going to tell you why I changed it with the musical fidelity, take a look about it. By the way comparing this setup with one D12S I got all the dynamic and the headroom that I was looking for when I had the 2000 Pro to have the right headrooms I had to play two of them, especially in complex passages like for example the intro of Age of Tomorrow. In here to get the right amount of uh, output you, or you have an efficient subwoofer like for example the PB pass reflex design from SVS that we test, this had a lot of output with less distortions or you have to play two subwoofer but was not the case of the D12S, where one was more than enough. I forget to tell you that on the Maren Cinema 40, I'm using the Dirac Live calibrations. Also, I did a video about it. Check it. I will let it in the description. It's a video that got more than 10K views. So really, thank you for your support, guys. But let's take a look of measures first. And after I will give you my subjective point of view. I did some basic tests with the Umic One and Rumeku Wizard from my listening position. So what you are going to see are not anechoic measures of the subwoofer, but measures in my environment. This measures is a left-right subwoofer comparison in THX mode. And we can observe that it's reaching 10 Hz of bottom end extension. That's insane. Then we have two modes around 36 and 65 Hz for both subwoofer that you can easily lower it with the EQ that in these measures were disabled. But what really impressed me was the distortion. Here we have the right subs playing almost on 110 dB with a THD of 1.3% on 20 Hz. Oh my god. For give you an idea here the SVS 2000 Pro where even reaching the 100 dB we have already 17% of THD at 20 Hz. Okay, it's an unfair comparison and I love the 2000 Pro because in my opinion it's one of the best affordable subwoofer available on the market today. But that's for showing you guys your money where are going and which quality you are going to have for a more expensive subwoofer, right? Because yes, I can give you my subjective experience telling you that the subs was performing 
great but i wanted to really show you something that will let you believe that the performance of the d12s are insane next i measure the three different equalization curves so large room small room and thx and in the end i choose the small one because it was giving me a better extensions in the low end and this measures was the left subs and here we have the right one so d12 is coming with an outstanding results i never saw a such a clean subwoofer output also at high spl So as I told you, I performed first all my movie tests with one subwoofer and I wanted to test the same materials that we saw at the high end Munich show. And I did this basically because I wanted to check if I at least could have the same feelings, right? That I had also in the insane 11.7.6 setup and that uh, was not the same. Of course, you can compare such an expensive and new setup with my right but was pretty closer by the way avatar that has also was streamed from disney plus so probably not the best audio quality in any case i really enjoyed it in the train explosion scenes i can say that for the first times a serious subs was able to give me the same emotions feelings of a bus reflex subs when it's come to feeling the air of spaceship takes off with authority and accuracy and not only congested rumble right moving on sting I love this concert, audio is okay, DTS HD masters, it could be better but it's fine and the D12S really helped to giving body, cleaning and expand the soundstage with a transparent and invisible performance. And here what really I love from the D12S is how much was musical and transparent, it's coming really with an invisible tonality that will match any home theater setup, so it's really versatile looking in this direction. Next I moved to Gravity Blu-ray and I really don't remember this movie having such a good LFE channel. I watched the Blu-ray once and then was in my collection for long times there just to take some dust, right? And playing it again with D12S was like watching a new audio track mix. In scene 4 when Ryan is shutting down losing the consciousness, she struggles to make it into the aircraft and when she is finally succeed, while pressurizing the cabby, the D12S filled the rooms with the right amount of pressures that allowed me to feel these dramatic situations as I was there. Really beautiful. And in the fire scenes I hear probably for the first time a sustained infrasonic note that I later measure around 24 Hz. Happy to see that the D12S can dig so low and still playing really clean. That's the cleanest level of output that I heard yet from a subwoofer. Moving on Top Gun, Mark 10 scenes, great sub test and I was afraid from this sequel because I love this movie, right? And I have to say that I really enjoy also the new one that is coming also with a beautiful audio track. Here the D12S shows an extremely clean low frequency response. Also when I push it at high SPL it didn't generate any strange harmonics. Many subs in these scenes could sound blotty, which may feel the pressures in your room not regular or uniform. But was not the D12S case that was playing powerful, solid, firm and with authority. Maverick. Maverick. Next the beautiful eye intro scenes in Blade Runner 2049. D12S was visceral even with one sub and crazy how I felt any single micro corner of my room fitted with strong pressures, making the scenes even bigger than it looks. Edge of Tomorrow killer intro is coming with three successive infrasonic hits that will literally kill your subwoofer if not well designed. And here I usually got ugly noise or distortion coming out from subwoofer when pushed at high SPL or a congested blurry bass tone rather than a real scale and here the d12s played in the infrasonic letting me feel to his right in my chest it can play under 20 hertz absolutely without any problem that's insane and another great movie that i really enjoy was underwater it's crazy because i watch a lot of odd movies with the d12s and i always had the feelings that i was really and finally playing these movies for the first times with the right sound quality at least bottom end sound quality and here i found everything so incredibly realistic moving just from a simple door closing to a more complex scenes the d12s impressed me with a unlimited dynamic expression 
everything sounds so natural and terrifyingly real. Next, I did also some measures with my iFi setup, so pair it with the Serafino traditions. And we can observe that the left and right channels are rolling off really quickly under 30 Hz. And we have a huge peak at 36 coming from my mod and of course a cancellation at 90 Hz. So that's normal also for an acoustically treated room. And here is where subwoofer are coming in action because they can really improve your setup. And basically in iFi I like always to play with an external crossover, active crossover and thanks to SPL they send it back to me, I review it and is a next level. It took me really 10 minutes to set up the SPL crossover. And here we can observe the Serafino plus subwoofer frequency response with the incredible extensions of 10 Hz to 36 kHz. No cancellations, no bump at all just amazing a beautiful flat frequency response and here a graph comparison of before and after no equalizations at all just subwoofer spl crossover and my hi-fi setup so generally i found 12 inch really perfect for music environment right hi-fi stereo i found that the quick it has a quick start and stop and a great attack and the d12s presents a ultra fast response in these terms I remember to get such a feeling of quickness only with the Veodine Digital Drive Plus 10s that we review. Also beautiful subwoofer but coming with a old software rather than a smart app like the Perlistance. But in terms of quickness and attacks, they are both of them are there, beautiful. And here the only difference when I test the subwoofer with the external crossover and with my Cinema 40 setup that is coming with digital corrections, right, and Dirac Live was about impulse response measures, where I noticed 5 or 6 milliseconds extra compared to the SVS 2000 Pro for example. But I didn't feel too much this slow signal processing, even in rock music where you need good tempo on the bass drum. By the way, I would like to see from Perlisten a sort of poor direct mode. If you have the Marantz or Denon receiver, you know that you have this poor direct mode that is going to disable the DSP or at least giving you a full analog signal from input to the output. And this really could be a next nice game in the per listen subwoofers with one buttons, you enable a poor direct mode, no DSP, of course, if possible, hardware speaking. For tools like me are using the subwoofer in home theater, so with receivers that are coming with calibrations, but also in hi-fi stereo, right, that are poor analog. Something really interesting that I would like to see on such a subwoofer. The D12S is so refined and clean that you can be really impressed from a visceral dynamic performance without sacrificing anything in transparency or attacking any other frequency range. But listen subs have nothing to do with dirty noise or rumble, but are about let you feel truly immersed as the director intended. A sub invisible in your room that is the director of the orchestra with an eye open to any passages or situations that is always under control. And this was my review guys of this beautiful subwoofer. I hope you enjoy it. As always, subscribe to the channel to support my work and see you soon.